The final chapter of ReZero Season 2 was cut from the anime entirely, probably because it would have been one of the biggest cliffhangers of all time. Aside from that, it was also my personal favorite moment in the ReZero novel. Ever since I first read this chapter, I looked forward to the day I would finally get to see it animated and then it became cut content. But this chapter will always be special to me, so hopefully this video can serve to share some of that excitement with all of you. The last chapter of ReZero Season 2 begins in a dark place, with the sound of footsteps echoing through the corridor. Due to the melting snow, the mud and gravel were painfully cold underneath her bare feet, but she continued walking until she reached the outside, seeing the sunlight again for the first time in 400 years. She expected her reunion with life to be rather moving, yet not a touch of emotion could be found in her eyes. Her lack of amusement was disappointing, yet something that impressed her was how well the reactivation ritual had remained intact. As she adjusts her eyes to the bright sun, she silently applauds herself for the convincing performance she delivered. As expected, her plan was successful. The fact that she's alive again was proof of that. The pink-haired woman appeared uncomfortable in her small body, but knew she would eventually grow accustomed to it. Adapting to things was never an issue for the thirst for knowledge incarnate. Because she was no longer Ryuzushima, she decides to call herself Omega, which means the end according to Subaru's memories from Earth. Omega's only regret was not being able to witness Amelia suffering during her third trial. Although she despised Amelia, Omega also appreciated her cooperation. If Amelia hadn't broken the barrier, Omega's half-elf body wouldn't be able to leave the sanctuary. So, for that, she was grateful, but thinking about Amelia made Omega's chest overflow with emotions, so she ignores them and ventures out through the forest while opening and closing her hands to make sure they're functioning properly. Reflecting back on the final events of the Sanctuary, she notes that Beatrice has parted ways with the Archive, Roswell has lost his guiding light, and Garfield is still completely filled with anger inside. She looked forward to watching over them, from the sun and in the shadows. 400 years, this world had awaited her return, and what it offered her now was infinite potential to satisfy her inexhaustible curiosity. She picks a flower and pops it into her mouth, questioning why it would someday wither. Both flowers and memories alike would eventually grow faint, and Omega wondered if perhaps now she'd be able to someday understand. Why must love fade? Once again, the witch was unleashed upon the world. Yeah, so that's how season two was supposed to end. Of course, my garbage video doesn't do it justice, so if you'd like to read the chapter yourself, it's right at the end of Light Novel Volume 15 or right at the end of Arc 4 in the web novel. There's multiple reasons I call this my favorite chapter. Firstly, it gave an additional purpose to all the happy moments in this season's conclusion. Now, instead of just being there, they also serve as build-up for a shocking plot twist that completely changes our perspective of what we saw this season. Echidna was always the one in control. Everything that happened was all just part of her plan. It was like Subaru and the rest of the cast were just Echidna's puppets who mistakenly thought they had free will. The reason Echidna always looked like she was planning something is because she was. The chapter also highlighted her curse. For the first time, we got to witness the affliction Echidna suffers from endlessly. The insatiable desire for unattainable gratification forever plagues Echidna unwavering in both life and death. It's why her second coming lacked any pleasure or joy. Even after being dead for 400 years, almost immediately upon resurrecting, life alone was no longer enough to satisfy her. No matter what, she always needs more, and that's what makes her such a perfect example of greed personified. Why Must Love Fade is my favorite quote from the novel because I think it describes Echidna flawlessly. I interpreted love fading as a metaphor for Echidna's fleeting satisfaction. Greed makes it impossible for her to be satisfied, so the reason love fades is because of greed. But the fact that Echidna's asking that question means greed is the one thing she doesn't understand, despite having infinite knowledge. It's very poetic, and this chapter was really the first time the author let us understand a little bit about Echidna. It might have been the shortest, most simplistic chapter of the entire novel, yet I felt it was by far the most impactful. But for anyone who's wondering how Echidna revived herself, it was the result of two things. A reactivation ritual that was established even before her death, and Ryuzushima accidentally taking the trials ten years ago. 
After Echidna's death, Roswell discovered that her experiments were unsuccessful because she was trying to put her soul into an empty vessel. However, if the vessel already had another soul inside of it, it was possible to possess their body by eliminating the lesser of the two souls. Thus, during Ryuzu Shima's trial, Echidna planted a small piece of her soul in Shima's body. Ever since then, she'd been slowly taking control of her body until finally she possessed her completely, which essentially killed Ryuzu Shima. This is why we hear Echidna's voice coming from Shima in Season 2, Episode 24. After possessing Shima, Echidna just needed Emilia to break the barrier to make it safe for her to venture beyond the sanctuary. Everything went according to her plan, and she reincarnated as Omega. So far in the novels, Omega has been completely absent from the main story, though I do expect to see her again once we're closer to the end. Thankfully, we can follow Omega's adventures by reading her series of side stories. They are side stories, so there's not going to be too many big reveals, though I will summarize the first one to at least give you an idea of what's been happening since Season 2. Before she left the sanctuary, Omega recovered her special mana crystal that contains the souls of all the other witches inside of it. From the crystal, the witches can watch everything Omega does and interact with her too, so these side stories have a lot of funny dialogue. Anyway, she ventures into the forest and beyond the sanctuary, but runs into a life-threatening issue. Snow is cold, and people freeze when they are frozen, so Omega tries to use fire magic to raise her body's temperature before she dies of hypothermia. Remember, Omega used to be a mage as powerful as Roswall, however she just got a brand new body that came with a brand new gate. Because she hasn't yet had the chance to adapt to it properly, the fire magic went horribly wrong and caught the surrounding forest on fire. Now, instead of freezing to death, she's about to burn to death, and if she dies, then her master plan would all be for nothing. Plus, the other witches inside the crystal would die too, again, or something. Ryuzu's gate wasn't suitable for using water magic, so instead, Omega uses wind magic to redirect the flames elsewhere. This allows her to survive, but ends up spreading the fire even more. After just barely escaping death, Omega felt exhaustion for the first time in 400 years. While she's resting, a group of bandits approach her with weapons. What a group of bandits might have wanted from a defenseless looking lolly is up to your imagination, but Omega tells them she'll do whatever they say if they're able to remain standing for the next 30 seconds. Omega then reveals her true form, allowing her soul to visualize behind her. After seeing the face of the Witch of Greed, one by one the bandits drop to the ground, puking their guts out, slitting their own throats, and foaming at the mouths. There were 18 bandits in total, and not a single one survived. Omega loots their bodies, finds some new clothing to wear, and then continues her journey as if she didn't just murder 18 people and burn down an entire forest within just 10 minutes of being alive again. That was the first Omega side story, and I thought it did a great job showing how dangerous witches really are. Echidna quite literally just reincarnated, and already she's causing unprecedented amounts of destruction. The following stories aren't quite as eventful, but I'd still recommend reading them because Omega is best girl. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I'm also hoping that Omega will get an OVA or something, but maybe I'm just in denial that my favorite chapter is never getting animated. Let me know what you guys think, make sure you like the video if you haven't already, I'm out for now though, keep talking about ReZero and stay hyped for season 3. Peace out.